Sugar, butter, pro shot. Friends, we have been blessed with the waitress pro shot. How did this even come to be? How did we even get blessed with this film? Watch on to find out. Friends, if you're new here, my name is Katherine Quinn. I am a 30-something living in New York City and working on Broadway. For better or for worse, Broadway is the love of my life. Last year I worked on Shucked and How to Dance in Ohio. This upcoming year I'm working on a couple of Broadway shows and at least one potentially pre-Broadway show. I will tell you all the tea as soon as I possibly can. I can't share information quite yet, but I promise as soon as I can share, I will share it with you all. So click that subscribe button so you don't miss a thing. Friends, we have been blessed with the waitress pro shot. Pro shot just means professionally shot shot waitress film. But if you're at this video, you probably already know that. Okay, so how did this even come to be? How did we even get blessed with this film? In the year 2021, Broadway was just starting to come back. The first Broadway musical to come back after the shutdown was Waitress. Now, Waitress had closed on Broadway. It wasn't planning to come back, but the producers wanted to film a pro shot of it and decided to remount a limited engagement to help Broadway come back. It was a commercially successful show. It felt like a palatable show for tourists to come back to, to return to, to feel safe at the theater. Over the course of five days during their limited run in the fall of 2021, cameras were set up for five performances in a row. They selected best of and edited together a gorgeous film. Now that's a very, 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 very simplified version of how this came to be. My understanding is that no one asked specifically for this. Now, of course, fans are thrilled that it happened, but from what I understand, this was a labor of love of Sarah Varelis and the producers, the Weislers, etc. They were the ones who made this happen. They self-funded this. We will talk about this more in a little bit, but if you're wondering why aren't there more Broadway pro shots, the simple answer is they're incredibly expensive and we haven't built an infrastructure for filmed Broadway shows that is super commercially viable yet. What the heck does that mean? Again, we'll discuss a little bit more later, but first of all, I wanna take a quick second to discuss the difference between a live live stream and a pro shot. A live stream is live. If you were in a Broadway theater, there would be four or five different cameras set up around the orchestra level, up in the mezzanine, maybe if they were being fancy, one in the wings. In real time, you would be given a link, log in, and on your computer, your device, on your TV, you could watch a live Broadway show. Now, there is precedent for this. She Loves Me did this back in 2016. I don't know, we'll check the year and put it up here. And then several plays have done it recently. I have an entire video, I have all kinds of videos about the possibilities of live streaming Broadway. I'll link one of them up here. And I'm very, very passionate about this because it's simply really, it's not feasible for everyone to get to New York City and pay what we now know is the average ticket price of $162 per seat to sit in a Broadway theater. That's just not doable for a lot of people who deserve to see Broadway entertainment. Furthermore, in case you aren't aware, Broadway theater is not doing so hot right now. We're about to have every single house on Broadway, every single Broadway theater packed, and we have about 20% fewer audiences than we had pre-pandemic. And even pre-pandemic, eight out of 10 Broadway shows was a financial failure. So this is a tough time. We need to be disruptive, we need to be innovative, and that's one of the reasons why I'm so obsessed with A, reaching the grand theater community here on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok, follow me, at it's Katherine Quinn, to have these discussions and to dream up and make tangible plans for getting theater out to the fans. I know, I know you're out there. I was out there. I'm gonna dismount my soapbox real quick. We're gonna talk about Waitress, it's gonna be great. Okay, so just some of the nuts and bolts of how this all happened. The show had its own director, Diane Paulus. The film has a separate director, a man named Brett Sullivan, who's done a number of movie musicals. We will list some of them here. Here. From what I understand, this is just like industry tea, industry chatter that I have heard. Allegedly, the first edit came together of all the various shots, etc., the sound mixing, all that jazz. The producers were like, this isn't it. This isn't it. Allegedly, the producers were like, we're gonna call up our pal Steven Spielberg and see if he has a recommendation for an editor. He did. They hired a new editor, question mark. Again, full industry tea. I don't and this is like also a game of telephone, so I may have some of the details incorrect, but Essentially, I think this is really interesting, particularly because, as we'll discuss later, this is for me the most successful pro shot of a Broadway musical that we've ever had. It felt very unique to me in that I actually felt like it imitated the experience of being in a theater better and more accurately than any pro shot I'd seen previously. And I think a lot of that had to do with the editing and the cinematography and oh my God, the sound mixing is so gorgeous. I think that that's really, really interesting that they didn't skimp 
I mean, and, and valuable, obviously, that they didn't skimp on the editing, on really making this the product that it needed to be, even without knowing what kind of financial viability or like if it would make its money back, essentially. I'm also just gonna take a quick moment here to say, as I am having conversations with people in the industry who do live stream theater and are interested in working on that, there is a conversation of like, what is the cheapest way we can do this? Because live streaming and pro shots are so incredibly expensive. Also, I'm realizing now we never, I never finished the other thing. It's like live streaming and then I talked all about live streaming and then just went on. That's ADHD. Pro shots are essentially what happened with Waitress. So usually over the course of several days, cameras stationary uh, throughout. Sometimes you'll have roving tracking cameras like they do at certain points in Waitress. And then you edit together a final product that will then be released. Live stream is meant to be like, it's on for that one night and then it goes off into the ephemeral ether and we never see it again. Whereas pro shots are meant to live indefinitely. Okay, so one is an ephemeral product and one is a stationary product. But there's a lot of conversation about the least expensive way to do it and how, how to cut costs. And if you can afford to cut the film director of a live stream or of a pro shot, or you know, do you need a certain caliber of editor? Or do you need an editor who's specialized in XYZ? And I just think that this pro shot has uh, illustrated to us beautifully that the answer is 100% yes. The distributor is Fathom Events. They do um, some lovely, large Christian Jesus-y ventures, nativity plays and such. They also do the Met Live. So the Metropolitan Opera has been live streaming for years, which people DM me about almost weekly because I'm an evangelist for live streaming theater. And they're like, oh my gosh, if the antiquated Met Opera can do it and has been doing it for over a decade, why can't we? It's a great question. The answer is unions. I'm not a union buster. I'm just gonna like say that because every time I'm like the unions are an obstacle to getting this done, people accuse me of being a union buster. No, it just means that it is gonna be more expensive because the unions fight good and hard for union protections for their constituents, their union members. Therefore, it is going to be a more expensive thing. There are also unions involved with the Met, not as many. And then also the Met is not strictly commercial, whereas Broadway is. So none of it's subsidized. That's like broad strokes, some of the big reasons. Fathom Events distributor, also Bleecker Street as, I don't know, production company, question mark. If you saw this in a movie theater and you were like, what is this random space station trailer that we get with Ariana DeBose? It is because it also, it shares the production company, Bleecker Street. How broad of a release was this? This was released in about 1200 theaters nationwide, which is a pretty broad release for a movie musical. Your standard big blockbuster release is about 4,000 movie theaters nationwide. And that's not a shabby number. I will say, however, after I saw the film and I was obsessed with it and posting on TikTok about it, at it's Catherine Quinn, folks were like, LOL, you said it was at a theater near you and this is nowhere near me. So it's not as broad of a distribution as folks would have liked, but still I think that's pretty impressive. It premiered at the Tribeca Film Festival over the summer and simultaneously it was cast to the TSX entertainment screen in Times Square and evidently you could have connected via an app and listened with headphones to the movie, which is pretty cool. Other than that, I did not see a ton of advertisement of this. It was mostly like, if you follow Sarah Bareilles online, follow at Waitress Musical online. I didn't hear any like, if I was taking a car that I shouldn't be paying for, but I am. Uh, if I was taking a car, I wasn't hearing anything about it on the radio. It was a very limited release. At first it was only five days and then it got extended once to December 13th and then it got extended again to December 21st. So there was demand, although I will say that my theater, my theater was about half full, which isn't bad, not bad, but it seems like advertising was pretty scrappy on this. How was it reviewed critically? How was it received critically? Incredibly favorably, if you are a Rotten Tomatoes user, which I know people have different feelings about review aggregate sites, which I totally agree with because it sort of like encourages groupthink in a certain way and like doesn't have room for us all liking different individual things as much, but it was reviewed incredibly favorably. Everyone universally liked it, whether they were a huge musical theater nerd or not. Now we have Sirens, New York City. What was my experience seeing the film? I'm not gonna lie to you. When I went to see this, it was somewhat reluctantly and as a business venture, just like, all right, I'm dipping my toes into Broadway marketing and I'm interested in live streaming and pro shot and what is successful. But I have to tell you that historically, I don't love movie musicals. For someone who is like as evangelical and passionate about filmed musicals as I am, I don't always love the experience. I love movies, I love musicals. I don't always love movie musicals. That's not to say that I don't love some, I do truly love some. So I went in dubious and in short, short order was just, 
madly in love. I think the editing is stunning. I think the cinematography is stunning. I think the sound design is stunning. I think that Sarah Bareilles gives an amazing performance. I saw it four times on Broadway Live with Jesse Mueller and Sarah Bareilles. They baked pies in the theater. It smelled so amazing. And I still loved watching it on the big screen to the point where at the end I was like, I would like to do this again. I loved it. Again, I just, I think that it did the most spectacular job of putting you in a fierce ass orchestra seat in the Brooks Atkinson Theater. It was amazing. Although I actually don't know if that's where it ended up remounted, but that's where it was originally, I think. All right, so bonus, the film ends. And of course the entire time I'm just like, oh my God, Sarah Burrells is amazing. Sitting with my friends, my friends are here. And I'm like, oh my God, Drew Galing is so cute. Like, he's so cute. He's Drew Galing who pay, plays Dr. Pometer. is just adorable. He's an adorable human. I'm over here gabbing the entire time and squealing and having a good time. And, you know, trying to keep myself from clapping out loud because I'm really wanting to at the end of production numbers, etc. blah, blah, blah. Okay, lights up, end of the film. Tall, 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 lanky, adorable man stands up directly in front of me and I'm like, cool, 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 cool. That's Drew Galing. <sighs> How much of that do you think he heard? Uh-huh, uh-huh. And then I'm going through my mental Rolodex of like, did I say anything embarrassing? I'm pretty sure that's his new wife that he's sitting next to, who I'm also a huge fan of. If you don't follow Advent Carol Dar, it's gonna sound like I said that wrong and I don't think I did, but she's just absolutely hilarious and talented also. He was sitting directly in front of us, which is what I should have expected. I saw it at Lincoln Square at 3 p.m. in the middle of the week. So like, you should just know that like, cast members are gonna be there. It was clear we were waiting in line for the bathroom. There was some other, how long ago did you film this, blah, blah, blah. Not even talking, Not that wasn't even a Drew Galing conversation. Like clearly other folks who worked on the film were in that screening. So just like, New York, da, 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 da. I loved it, I loved it, I loved it. We gotta talk about the trailers. We gotta, we gotta talk about the trailers. So prior to the film, it's a weird experience because you don't get your standard movie trailers. The only normal movie trailer that we got was that random space station one, which incidentally is a very now well-reviewed film starring Ariana DeBose, ISS. Good for her. Otherwise, we got all the like, you know, Fathom Events Jesus film and Fathom Events Met Opera. And prior to that, we had like full screen random ads of like a mommy blogger and a QR code, okay? Why didn't we have an ad for the Color Purple film? Why didn't we have an ad for the Mean Girls film? Why didn't we have an ad for Wonka? Okay, scrap those. If they were like, ah, oh, waitress, we don't need it. Why didn't we have an ad? for one of the 14 new original musicals that we have coming to Broadway this season. Now, I spoke with some of my friends in marketing and they were like, Catherine, the way that it works is, A, we don't have trailers for those. Like, we haven't started rehearsals yet. And I was like, yeah, 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 okay, sure. But like, tell me that the same audience for Waitress isn't the audience for The Notebook written by Ingrid Michaelson to see the Sarah Bareilles musical, okay? This seems like a very logical through line. I was like, here's all I need. Ingrid, if this is love, one of the songs from notebook that they've already released, playing in the background, her in front of the art, talking about what you could expect to feel in the show and how much she loves it and how incredible the cast is and we've already announced our two leads and like how remarkable they are, etc, etc. 30 seconds, in and out, oh my god there's a waitress musical, oh my god Ingrid Michaelson, broadcast to the 1200 theaters nationwide for two weeks of full of Broadway fans. People who liked Waitress enough or like Sarah Bareilles enough to go see a musical in a movie theater. A plane is landing. And my friends in marketing were like, okay, sure, sure, sure. But the only time that that could have happened would be in the ad portion when the lights are still up. So when you saw the mommy blogger with a QR code, we could have purchased ad space, but we can't just have a trailer because it's not a Fathom Events event. Now, first of all, we're all smart people. Surely there was some way, maybe, maybe, to wheel and deal our way into a, 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 momo, a moment, a momo, a moment with the lights down. But if not, you know what, fine, I'll take the lights up ad because that mommy blogger got my attention. I can't stop thinking about it. I'm like, why, why, why is this, why is this what we're seeing? The other thing that I'm gonna say is two takeaways that I saw both you know, on the interwebs at large and experienced in real life. One is because I think we get so excited that we can get close-ups of Broadway actors in these films, we really do get close-ups. You're gonna wanna sit a few rows back. Like Drew Galing was really close to Drew Galing's face. So I recommend strategically sitting a little further back in the theater. Second of all, as we're talking about trailers and ads, et cetera, this evidently varied theater to theater. So like I was in an AMC, which that would have been a safe bet just for what it's worth in terms of Broadway marketing agencies. They're, they should have bought some AMC ad space or producers or who, you know, whatever, whoever we wanna, I don't wanna throw anyone under the bus here, but that, you know, anyway. Certain theaters and you know, you buy a certain number of markets, blah, blah, blah. Some theaters evidently had zero trailers. And so folks who were not there at their exact time, which you're used to 15 to 20 minutes of trailers, were late to waitress. So just things to note for the future. 
Do I think that this qualifies as a success? Absolutely. Getting to pay $15 to $20 across the nation to see a Broadway musical performed exquisitely with perfect sound and a perfect seat in the house, yeah, it's amazing. Commercial viability and the model for future shows. What does this indicate to us? All right, so we've already talked about the pro shot versus live stream. As of the recording of this video, Waitress has outperformed its limited release. It had to extend a couple of times. And as of the time of this release, no streaming service, no major streaming service. I'm not talking about Broadway HD, no hate to Broadway HD, but like one that would actually make the producers back their money, like an HBO, an Apple TV Plus, which has come from away, you know, one of those, has purchased it. Now, with how well it was received, I can't imagine that this will remain the case. I imagine a streamer will pick it up. I hope that it does. It got $3.2 million opening weekend at the box office, reaching number eight domestic box office, which is really pretty impressive for a tiny limited release Broadway musical and movie theaters. However, comma, I don't know what the capitalization of the film was. I do know that like a recent pro shot quote for a Broadway production was $6 million. So I'm hoping that it does get picked up by a streamer and makes up the rest of its money because it's not really likely to make the other couple million dollars back just from folks paying $14.99 on iTunes, which please, by all means, go for it. Final, final takeaways here. I just think that this Waitress movie musical sets an absolute new standard for pro shots. I want more live streaming theater. I want more pro shots. Everyone who had any part of this should feel incredibly proud. I am so grateful for it. I can't wait to watch it on a small screen in the comfort of my home, have it on as a background comfort film because Waitress was absolutely my comfort musical for several years. We don't really have that many like just like flat out rom-coms at this moment. And I'm just so happy that Sarah Bareilles and producers made the investment and that this wonderful cast was game. And I just think it is a fantastic celebration of contemporary musical theater. If you saw it, I wanna know what you think. Are you as pumped about this as I am? Do you feel it was as successful as I did? Were you disappointed? What was your experience in the theater? I really, really, my favorite part of this entire online experience is discussion and community. So truly, I wanna know what you think. Leave a comment down below. Of course, feel free to follow me on Instagram and TikTok at it's Katherine Quinn. As always, thank you so much for watching. It means a whole lot to me if you click that like button, click that subscribe button so you don't miss a thing. It lets the YouTube algorithm know which wonderful folks to push this video out to, folks like yourself. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time. Bye.